Tell me everything I need to know about Two Factor. Hello and welcome to iPhone Black and White, video series dedicated to help anybody become an iPhone expert, even you. Okay, so in this video we are going to be discussing two factor authentication. Two factor is basically the security level that you have for your Apple ID. And we are going to discuss everything that you need to know about two factor just to make sure that you understand what it is, how it works, why it's so important for you to use this and at the same time the little things that you can do to make sure that it doesn't kind of screw you over because the biggest problem that people end up having with two-factor is they don't quite understand how it works and if you don't it is going to cause you a major headache so that's when you're gonna have to go down the account recovery road and it's really going to annoy you so be lucky if you don't know what I'm talking about yet if you do you understand what a headache it is but we are going to cover everything so you never have to go through that kind of a headache alright with that being said let's jump into it okay so the first thing to answer is what is it and the simplest way to explain two factors to understand that it is a type of security for your Apple ID. So just stop and remember for a second that your phone or your iPad is not nearly as important as your actual Apple ID because it's your ID that is going to be where, you know, all of your photos, all your contacts, all the all your purchases, everything about your identity within Apple is linked to your Apple ID. So if you're backing up all of your information onto your Apple ID into the iCloud, well, the only way to get to it is by knowing your Apple ID and having access to your Apple ID. So the benefit immediately in using two-factor authentication is if the worst possible thing happens and that you forget your password or you basically can't get the verification code and we're going to cover that in a second even if that happens Apple can still help you get back into your account it's through a process called account recovery and it's a headache it's really annoying but the benefit is number one it's actually the best way to kind of keep your account secure and number two it actually is a way for you to get back into your account and so with that being said I'm gonna mention briefly the other most common kind of security is called secondary authentication secondary authentication basically is this you need to know your password and that's pretty much it. You need to know your ID, of course, and then you need to know your password. But there's a big problem with this. The problem is, basically anybody can, if they get your password, they can sign into your account. And sign into your account and make a bunch of changes or delete your stuff or get all of your information. So it's not very secure. It's not a good way to keep your account secure. The other huge disadvantage in secondary authentication is if you do forget your password, there's nothing that Apple can do to help you. Absolutely nothing. Because the only way at that point for you to reset your password is to either have access to whatever the email account is that you set up to receive a verification email, or you have to know your security questions that you created when you created the account. Guess what? Most people don't remember their security questions. So that means the only way they're going to reset their password is going to be getting that verification email. Well, guess what? A lot of people made that verification account, that email account, years ago. And maybe they forgot and they deleted it or they don't remember the password to it and they can't get into that account then you're out of luck. There's nothing Apple can do to help you at that point. There's no way for you to basically get back into your account unless you remember your password. But with two-factor, 
It doesn't matter. Two-factor is a great way for you to be able to make sure you can get back into your account. So that's my brief overview and let's go ahead and kind of look a little bit further into it. But let's get to right here, what to remember when you use two-factor authentication. And like it's saying, two-factor significantly improves the security of your Apple ID. After you turn it on, signing into your account will require both your password and access to your trusted devices. To keep your account as secure as possible and help ensure you never lose access, there are a few simple guidelines. Remember your Apple ID password, and that is true because that's important, but if you end up forgetting it or you get locked out, it's okay. Uh, use a device passcode on all your devices. Some people don't like to use passcodes. It's really important that you do, just for instances like with your phone, you get locked out and you need to be able to get back into your account. It will ask you for your passcode. And so if you don't know it, well, now you're in even more trouble, but you can get through it. It's just a headache. And then this right here, keep your trusted phone numbers up to date. This is probably the most important thing and I'm, we're gonna discuss this here in a second. And blah, 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 the rest of this, I can kind of let you read through on your own. Okay, so this is super, super important. Make sure of all the things I'm about to say in this video, this is the one that you pay the most attention to. Warning, warning, I'm stressing this, okay. Like it was just saying in that document, it said, keep your trusted phone number up to date. Here is the fatal flaw that people end up making when they go and they get a brand new phone. They say to themselves, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get a brand new phone number. Okay, that's fine. If you want to get a, a new phone number, hey, no problem. But be forewarned. If you do not go in and add that trusted phone number to your Apple ID, then that means you just changed your phone number and now guess what? You don't have access to that old number because you got rid of it. Which means if you need to get a verification code, you're not going to get the verification code. So that means you're going to end up doing an account recovery. So it is not uncommon for people to, you know, their, their contracts up and they want to go get the new iPhone. So they go to whatever their carrier is. They go in and like, yeah, I, I want to get the new phone. Okay, no problem. Let's get you all switched over. And oh, I want a new phone number. Okay, great. Here's your new phone number. And they transfer all your information from the old phone onto the new phone. You go home and guess what? You can't get into your account because you can't get a verification code. It will be okay because that's the whole point of account recovery, but it might even take you up to four weeks to get back into your account. So keep in mind, if you are getting a new phone number, what you have to do is add that number to your account before you get rid of your old phone number. It is vitally important that you understand that. And you can do that while you're still in the store. This is not something that you've got to do a week in advance. You can do it within five minutes of getting rid of your old phone number, but you've got to have access to your account. And in order to have access, you get that verification code and that code is going to go to your trusted number. So make sure you don't get rid of that number until you've added the new number to your account. I think I've stressed that enough now. Okay, so everything I just got done talking about with like losing your phone number, there's actually a way around this, but it's only going to apply to people who have another trusted device. So this would apply to someone who's got an iPhone and an iPad or an iPhone and a Mac computer. As long as your ID is already on one of those other devices already. So. What, how do you add another trusted device to your account? Well, let's look. It's super simple, super easy. Okay, so again, we're looking at the iPhone user guide from support.apple.com. 
This is basically managing two-factor authentication for your phone. It gives kind of an overview that we saw on the other one. This is how to turn on, blah, blah, blah. But let's get down here. Add another device as a trusted device. So a trusted device is one that can be used to verify your identity by displaying a verification code from Apple. These are the different requirements. Most people are already going to be well past iOS 9. So after you turn on two-factor authentication on one device, sign in with the same Apple ID on another device. When you're asked to enter a six-digit verification code, do one of the following. Obtain the verification code on your phone or another trusted device that's connected to the internet. Uh, obtain the verification code with the trusted phone number or obtain the verification code on the d trusted device that's offline. On a trusted iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch, go to settings, your name, password, and security, then tap get verification code. Okay, so we've kind of looked at the basics of two-factor, so let's go ahead and we're going to go to one of the most important screens on your phone, and that is the password and security screen. And this is really the screen that's gonna allow you to kind of control a lot of aspects of your ID. Okay, so we're gonna go to our phone, to our settings. We're gonna click on our name up here. And then we're gonna click on password and security. And there's a bunch of good things that you can do in here. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of block some of this out. Um, but the first thing you'll notice up here at the top is change password. So if you need to change your password, this is the easiest way to do it. You do it right on your phone or on your iPad, get to this screen, click change password, boom, make your new password. You'll see it says two-factor authentication. This is turned on for me. I, then you'll see the get verification code. That is to get a code if your device is basically offline or you're trying to get signed in on a new device. It's very rare you would ever need to do that, so I'm not gonna cover it too much here. But right there, it says trusted phone number. And to the right, you see it says edit. This is so incredibly important. This is, everyone should be doing this, every single person. You should have like a family member or somebody else that you trust and what you do is you click on edit and then you'll click on blue right there. It says add a trusted phone number. The reason this is so important is if anything ever happens to your phone, let's say you only have one phone and that's it. Then adding a trusted phone number for somebody else doesn't give them access to your account. It's just a way that allows Apple to send you a verification code if you no longer have your phone. So if you need to get into your account, this is what allows someone to receive that code to give to you. So once you get to this screen, all you're gonna do is put in the phone number, then choose how to send it, either a text message or a phone call. And then they're going to, uh, it's gonna be automated. The code will go to that person's phone and on your phone, it'll say, enter the verification code that we just sent to this other number. They'll give you that code, you put it in, and boom, you're done. You added in the other person's phone. And I wanna stress to you, remember, this does not give them access to your account in no way, shape, or form. All this does is it allows Apple to send a verification code to somebody else's phone if you can't get your verification code because your phone is lost, it's stolen, it's damaged, you know, who knows what. Or maybe even you went to the carrier and got a new phone and got a new phone number and didn't update your phone. Well, guess what? As long as you've got another trusted phone number added already to your account, you can still get that verification code because as long as that person has their phone, then they can get it. I hope that makes sense. I'm really trying to stress here that it is the best possible decision for you to add in another trusted phone number, so make sure you do it. Okay, so the final two things I'm gonna discuss here super, super quick is on that screen we were on, it says it, it gives you the recovery key option. I'm gonna let you research that on your own more or less, um, but if you go back to that screen on your own phone and kind of read what it's saying, 
is that recovery key is it will generate basically not only the verification code um, is required to sign in on your account but in addition to that there's an additional key that is that needs to be used personally I'm not a huge fan of the recovery key I think it adds a layer of security that the average person doesn't really need to have because if you turn that on guys you have to have that recovery key you have to have it so it's something that I'm just not really a fan of because I think all you really need to do to have kind of an extra uh, way to help yourself out is to just add another trusted phone number so if that's something you want to look into look into that on your own my personal opinion the average person doesn't need to have it and the last thing I'm going to mention here and this is super vitally important I've stressed a lot of things here with two-factor because it's so confusing to a lot of people so I hope this has all made sense but let me stress one final thing and this is probably I, I, I can't believe people would fall for it but I've got to mention it because I know people do this under no circumstances ever never ever ever give anyone the verification code if they ask for it if you are talking with somebody let's say you think you're talking to Apple right let's say you're talking who you think is Apple and they ask for your password and then they also ask for the verification code well the, if you're silly enough to believe somebody over the phone who says I need your password and you have a mental breakdown and you're like oh sure my password is blah 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 okay you're not thinking clearly but for crying out loud if anyone asks for a verification code guys the whole point of the verification code is that is your last line of defense that is what prevents a scammer from getting your Apple ID and your password but if they end up getting both those pieces of information that verification code is the last line of defense it's what prevents a scammer from getting into your account so under no circumstances will anybody legitimately ever have a need to get that verification code so dear lord in heaven do not tell anybody what that is I can't believe I got to stress this but it is super super important because there are people falling for this right now and you've got to understand no 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 do not give out your verification code thank you so much for taking the time to watch the video if you found this helpful or um, definitely hit the like button hit subscribe come on back learn how to become an iPhone expert and don't forget Share this video with your family and friends so I can turn them into experts as well. Alrighty, guys. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time. See ya. Nerd.